In today's video, we're looking at Hilton status, the different levels, what to expect, how to earn it, and also why getting it might be easier than you think. Big favor before we dive in is to hit the like button, and if you are someone that's new to the Ask Sebi Business channel, then consider subscribing. In terms of levels, there's technically five, but I'd argue that there's only three that matter. One of the ones that I don't really count is member, which is if you have zero to 10 nights. The reason is because you get this by signing up and you're good to go. It's not bad by any means, but the benefits are pretty minimal and not that tangible. The ones that might be useful are going to be free Wi-Fi and also no resort fees on reward stays. If you don't currently have an account, I would check for promos. So for example, right now, if you are a new member, you can get 1,000 points for your first stay and 2,000 bonus points for your second stay. It's not much, but a nice jump start. The first rung of actual status is silver that normally requires 10 to 39 nights in the last calendar year. It definitely is a lot of nights, but there are some strategies to get this, even if you don't stay as much. Silver comes with five additional perks, and the tangible ones to me are going to be 20% bonus points on stays, free water bottles, and also fifth night free when using points. As dumb as it sounds, free water bottles is a nice feature, especially in cities. Fifth night free can save you a ton of points if you are transferring American Express MR points membership award points to Hilton for a big redemption like the Waldorf Astoria, Park City, or Maldives. If you are considering using points, then this is the bare minimum status you should have. Next level up is gold, which requires 40 to 59 nights in the last calendar year. You're going to get four additional perks here, space available upgrades, and a daily food and beverage credit or continental breakfast are going to be the big ones. Hilton is the most finicky hotel chain in terms of upgrades, and we will do a deeper dive later on in the video. Main thing to know though is that it very much depends on where you travel in terms of region. Breakfast or the food credit is another rabbit hole that we'll dive into, but it is one of the better perks. Your mileage may vary, but it's exceeded my expectations. The third rung of status is diamond, which requires 60 nights per year. I would say that this is a sweet spot for status, and there's a lot going on here. Of these, I think there's four that really matter. First one is 100% bonus points on stays. Number two is better space available upgrades. Number three, executive lounge access. And number four is premium Wi-Fi. A lot of the other ones either don't do anything or probably don't apply to you. For example, the gift of gold status lets you gift gold status to someone else, but you do have to earn diamond from stays and not from a credit card. Also, the fact that gold status just isn't that hard to get here with hotels compared to something like airlines. The 48-hour guarantee is a weird one because some people would argue that it's worthless. It pretty much means that if you want to stay somewhere and it's sold out, then they'll try to get you a room. They do have a lot of outs for this depending on occupancy, and especially if there is a special event like a solar eclipse. But yeah, other than that, I think there's the four tangible ones. 100% bonus points on stays is really good if you are spending a lot on Hilton and staying a ton. Executive lounge access is probably the best perk, especially if you do travel to Europe or Asia, where they tend to be a lot nicer. Premium Wi-Fi is one that I really like because I need to upload stuff, and that is a pretty big difference. But sometimes I still do end up going to their business center and connecting to the Ethernet because that's even faster. For 99% of people, Diamond is the highest level. There technically is a secret level of lifetime Diamond status. Secret is a pretty strong word as well because all the details are pretty public. In order to get this, you do need to have Hilton Diamond status for 10 years, which can be non-consecutive and one of two things. Option one is going to be 1,000 paid or reward stays, and number two is earning 2 million base points. The good thing here is that diamond status from credit cards do count for this. But still, 1,000 nights or 2 million base points is still a ton. If you are curious about your progress, you can email them and they'll let you know. For example, I'm at 48 nights out of 1,000 nights and about 1 million base points out of 2 million. Also 5 years and 221 days out of the 10 years. The main issue is that it's not really worth chasing. You get a one-time gift when you hit lifetime status, this tends to be a card, and also maybe headphones. That's pretty much it. For some hotels, you might get upgrade priority over regular diamond, but other people have mentioned that there's no difference. In their case, lifetime diamond is pretty much equivalent to diamond. Also, apparently some of the front desk systems and also agents might not even be able to tell the difference between lifetime and non-lifetime diamond. Maybe this changes in the future, but given how easy it is to get status with credit cards, I would probably allocate your business and non-interesting stays at kind of boring hotels towards Hyatt or Marriott for their lifetime programs. If this is diamond and adding one more is lifetime diamond, not really worth chasing. This brings us to shortcuts for status. Let's say you get value from the status, but you don't want to stay 60 nights out of the year. This is where credit cards come into the picture. So for example, for the American Express Hilton, which has no annual fee, 
you're getting silver status. Pretty much the best way to get your foot in the door, given the current meta with intro bonuses and if you want to maximize your rewards. I can talk about it more if needed, but this is where you want to start. If you want Hilton Gold status, then you have four options. You have the American Express Hilton Surpass that has a 150 annual fee that gets you gold status. It also does have a $200 Hilton credit that's $50 per quarter, which can be annoying, but might be a gift in disguise. Also a free night if you spend $15,000 per year on the card. You technically can spend your way to diamond status, but not really worth it to me. Another option for gold status is the American Express Hilton Business that has a 195 annual fee. Here you do get a 240 Hilton credit that's $60 per quarter. If you are going for gold status of a Hilton card, I'd probably go for the surpass given that 15k free night and the value of it. Two other options are the American Express Platinum and Business Platinum that both come with Hilton Gold and also Bonvoy Gold. Both are great options if you're not sure which hotel chain you want to go with and you're kind of testing the waters. At the same time, both cards do have pretty high annual fees and also a ton of credits. Given this, I would definitely recommend going to our website, Ask Sebi, and playing off the calculators to make sure that you get value. If you are going for the Platinum card, I would strongly recommend checking Card Match to see if you have an elevated offer. This is how a lot of people end up getting 150,000 points on the Platinum. We do have a post walking through this, and it should pop up if you Google Card Match Ask Sebi. If you're looking for diamond status, then you're looking for the American Express Hilton Aspire that has a 550 annual fee. So it sounds scary, but there are a lot of credits and other benefits that outweigh this. You get up to 400 for Hilton Resorts, 200 for Q1 and 2, and another 200 for Q3 and 4. This is great for food or even the room rate for cheaper hotels. Also 200 for flights, broken down into 50 per quarter. It is a bit annoying, but I would argue that it's a bank shot if you know what you're doing. The most valuable perk is the free night reward that you get by just holding the card. If you're on the fence, probably the Platinum, but otherwise work your way up the Hilton cards. Long term though, the Hilton Aspire is definitely a Hall of Fame card. On that note, if you want to learn about any of these cards or pretty much any other cards out there and you want to support the channel, we do have links on the website, asksebi.com business and also down below in the description box. As always, make sure the links are competitive, but otherwise it is a huge way to support the channel so thank you guys in advance. Breakfast and food credits at Hilton's is a pretty interesting rabbit hole. It depends on your level, the brands, whether there's a lounge, and also whether it's in the US. For Embassy Suites, Hampton Inns, Homewood Suites, Home to Suites, Project H3, Spark, and True, you get breakfast anyways. So whether you have note status or you have diamond status, you're treated exactly the same here for the purpose of breakfast. Main reason being that these are long stay hotels and that's kind of the focus. For most of these, you're looking at maybe mini box cereal, bagels, and fruit. And if you're lucky, pancake machine, pre-made eggs, bacon, sausage. That's the case for the US and also abroad, so super straightforward. Otherwise, if you're traveling in the US and you have Hilton Gold status or Hilton Diamond status, you're going to get a credit for food and beverages. This is going to be for all the other hotel brands. That includes Canopy, Conrad, Curio, Doubletree, Hilton Garden Inn, Hilton Normal, LXR, Motto, Signia, Tapestry, and also Waldorf Astoria. You're looking at between $10 per person to $25, generally based off the price level of the hotel. So for example, Hilton Garden Inn, it's $10 per person, Waldorf Astoria, $25. If you have two guests, you're going to get double that amount, and if you have more, it's still just two peoples. So for example, Waldorf Astoria, even if you have three people for whatever reason, you're only getting 50 bucks. Also for some of them like Curio or Doubletree, there can be a range, so 15 or 18, depending on the region. For Mandy and I, it very much depends on if the restaurant there is good and if we have time. If it's something like a Conrad or Waldorf Astoria, then we typically do breakfast because it tends to be a lot nicer. If it's a double tree, we might get coffee or snacks or maybe Diet Cokes or grab a drink at the bar. So that's if you have gold or diamond status, but if you have diamond, there is an exception. The reason for this is because diamond status gets you lounge access at some of their properties. This includes Conrad, Curio, Doubletree, Hilton, LXR, Signia, and Tapestry. If you have diamond status, you get lounge access, and if breakfast is served at that lounge, then you do not get the credit. If there's no lounge, or if breakfast is not served there, then you still get the credit. So for example, we have diamond status, and for Conrad properties, we're supposed to get lounge access, but for the Conrads in New York, they don't have a lounge, therefore you get the food and beverage credit. Hopefully that makes sense. For non-US Hilton, so ones that are abroad, if you have gold status or diamond status, you're going to get free continental breakfast for the following brands. That includes Canopy, Conrad, Curio, Doubletree, Hilton, Hilton Garden Inn, LXR, Signia, Tapestry, and Waterfastoria. 
pretty much the only ones that are missing are going to be the long stay ones that have breakfast by defaults and also motto, which is still with credit even abroad. Your mileage may vary, but internationally, breakfast seems to be pretty solid. Most of the Asian hotels I've been to have amazing breakfasts, and even if you have gold status, it's a really nice win. A lot of these are ones I would probably happily pay 20 to maybe even $40 for. I haven't really tried as many European ones, but they've been pretty good as well. Weirdly enough, this also carries over to upgrades. In the US, upgrade odds are pretty bad. You'll see a ton of data points on Reddit and Flyer Talk that'll match this experience. My guess is that for the US, we just have more business travelers and consultants who have status. Also, a lot of people that have status from credit cards. And number three, they probably just don't care. In contrast, I find that Asia and Europe are a lot better at upgrades and prioritizing status and even just the experience. Maybe it's just me, but tourism and hospitality feels like a bigger focus. If you are going to cities that have a lot of business travelers, then it still can be a bit tough. So for example, when we go to Hong Kong or Bangkok, upgrades are a lot tougher. Still though, for resorts and a lot of other destinations, you are probably going to have a lot of success. It also could be that they have more rooms to work with and also the mandate by management. From the sound of it, Lifetime Diamonds are getting a similar experience. Great treatment in Europe and Asia, but pretty dismal in the US. And that's not to say that you're not going to get upgraded in the US, but have lower expectations. It does happen, and you can see this from SFO1K during his Vegas Conrad stay, and also his Doubletree Dallas stay. Also Kirkwood J who got upgraded to the presidential suite at the Hilton Hawaii for a four night stay. Generally speaking, nicer brands are better managed and have better policies because they want to keep people happy. The ones that tend to be the worst are the ones that have a lot of traffic. So for example, the Hilton in DC was a pretty underwhelming stay for my trip. If the stance by management is that they don't do upgrades and that they're very revenue focused, that's fine. The thing that kind of frustrates me is when they lie and tell you that there are no upgrades and that it's fully sold out. And then you pull out your phone or your laptop and show them a bunch of options for different ranges and it's available. If there are no upgrades and that's fine. So when we went to the water for Storia, Los Angeles, there wasn't anything, but it was still a great stay. This isn't me, but this comment on Flyer Talk resonates a lot of me, so I'll read some of it. This is by HFly, and they do get upgraded more than they're not, other than at slammed events. And in those cases, they know not to expect it. The only time that they experience shenanigans are in mid-level US cities at mid-level Hilton brands. That's when they're told that there's no upgrades available, even though you can show them 10 different categories all the way up to the presidential suite. Good properties tend to clear upgrades the night beforehand and proactively assign it. And then bad ones don't really do anything. And when you try to check in, they don't know what you're talking about. Pretty much leaning on the no availability, even though the hotel might be at low capacity. I think when customers know more about the policies and the terms and conditions compared to employees, then there's a problem. Okay, so what's the main takeaway for all of this? Gold status gets you breakfast or credits. Diamond gets you either those two or lounge access. For upgrades with gold, I'd expect a higher room, better view, and maybe a corner room. For diamond, same thing as gold, but you might also get suites. Breakfast, upgrades, and service tend to be a lot better in Asia and Europe compared to the US, depending on the chain and location. Also, more expensive brands tend to have better customer service and also experiences. So you can expect more from a Conrad or a Waldorf Astoria compared to a Hilton Garden Inn. Lastly, resorts and destinations tend to be better of upgrades compared to cities. For gold status, either the American Express, Hilton Surpass, or Platinum, or Business Platinum. For Diamond, it's the Hilton Aspire. Again, if you want to learn about any of these cards, we have links on the website, asksabi.com business, and also down below in the description box. If you made it to this point, leave a pancake emoji in the comments down below, and I'll try to heart it and also respond. Three questions. Number one, which Hilton cards do you have? Number two, what's been your experience or status? And number three, do you prefer breakfast or the credits? Let me know and everyone else know in the comments down below. Big favor, hit the like button, consider subscribing, but otherwise hope you liked it. See you next time.